So um, let's see, I mean, uh, how good we are at marketing our solutions and how we can improve. So we consider this workshop as well as a gym, a bit. Uh, and we go to our first uh, technical session, which is about uh, the use of satellite data for uh, solar energy. So this panel will be moderated by Judith Borsboom from Locality. Judith is the founder of Locality, a company focusing on research and innovation management in the field of smart climate neutral cities. She initiated and contributed to several smart sustainable city research and innovation projects with local authorities across Europe. And she currently supports the DG Energy of the European Commission as Action Cluster Coordinator in the European Innovation Partnership on, the, on Smart Cities and Communities Marketplace, today Smart Cities Marketplace. So please, Judith, the floor is yours to introduce the session and the speakers. Thank you, Grazia, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, after the uh, inspiring keynotes by uh, Fasileos, uh, Latinos, uh, Cristina Martinez and Carl Pucci, we now start with the third part of the program, uh, which will focus on uh, examples of how satellite data can be applied to enable clean solar energy uh, in cities. And we have examples from France, Greece uh, and Egypt. Um, I would like to welcome our valued uh, speakers, uh, Professor Philippe Blanc, uh, Director of Research and Deputy Head of the Department of Energy and Processes of uh, Mines Perry Tech and uh, researcher at the Center Observation, Impact and Energy at Armine, who works on modeling of solar radiation and its assessment from in situ measurements and satellite images. Uh, we also have uh, Pana Giotis Kosmopoulos, postdoc researcher at the National uh, Observatory of Athens at the Institute of Environmental Research and Sustainable Development. Uh, our third speaker is Professor Heshem uh, El Askari, Professor of Remote Sensing and Earth System Science at the Center of Excellence in Earth System Modeling and Observation at Smith College of Science and Technology, uh, also affiliated to Chapham University in the USA and the Center for Environment and Development for the Arab Region and Europe in Egypt, uh, and also a liaison to the New and Renewable Energy Authority, uh, NREA, in Egypt. Uh, further, I would like to express a warm welcome to all participants. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot see you with GoToWebinar, but we hope we will, uh, that you will contribute to a lively uh, discussion and exchange of thoughts by putting your questions uh, in the question box. Uh, this session will be in the form of two presentations with uh, hopefully a bit of room for questions after each presentation. So please, uh, the audience, feel invited to interact during these uh, uh, Q&A uh, moments. Uh, time is running and we are already a bit late, I see. Uh, so I would like to invite the first speaker, Professor Philippe Blanc, uh, who will present us uh, an online system to forecast solar energy potential, which is already used in uh, different cities. Uh, please, Philippe, the floor is yours. You're muted. <laughs> Should be okay now? Yes, we can hear can, you. And can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Please go ah. ahead. So thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for the organization and the invitation. So my talk will be about the use of satellite data to assess and forecast solar energy potential in cities. And we will um, demonstrate how to go from solar cadaster to PV viability at urban scale. So just in addition to the, my presentation and my bio, um, I'm also uh, the showcase leader of uh, about renewable energy uh, in the framework of the ongoing Horizon 2020 project eShape. So first of all, a global overview of Earth observation data we can use for solar energy assessment and forecast. Uh, this graph is uh, um, organized in space scale and in time scale. And for the largest space and time scales, you can have information from numerical, numerical weather and chemical transfer models, for example, IFS from the ECMWF Institute, or data about uh, chemical transform and uh, 
and uh, information about water vapor and aerosol from Copernicus and most particularly Copernicus Atmospheric Monitoring Services. Uh, at the opposite, at the thinner space and time uh, scales, we can have pyrometric sensor in situ measurements that measure the solar radiation. And we have also emerging new in situ, in -situ instruments, which are the fisheye cameras. In between, we have a gap, and this gap can be filled by um, geostationary meteorological satellites from which we can derive solar uh, surface solar irradiance data. And uh, from MinParitech, um, uh, MinParitech is at the beginning of Heliosat families methods. And now we are uh, using in operational way Heliosat 2 and Heliosat 4 method to derive solar databases, Eliokim 3 for Heliosat 2 and CAMS, which means CAT. Copernicus Atmospheric Monitoring Services, radiation, and uh, MACLIR for the clear sky estimation of solar radiation. This data from uh, Eliosat 2 and Eliosat 4 uh, is coming from the Metosat second generation Severi instruments and is provided by um, uh, Transvalor Innovation SODA uh, can, that can be reached through the website www.soda-pro.com. So, photovoltaic. In urban area are, of course, to my to my sense, uh, for rooftop and parking shades of very interest of, of very interest because it does not emit any pollutants or greenhouse gas uh, during their uh, 25 uh, or more years of exploitation. It produces electricity where the electricity is consumed, so it's more efficient and it uh, provides added value to unused ur urban roofs and parki parking shades and is an element, interesting element for fighting against the, um, the urban heat island effect. Solar cadastres are in fact high resolution metric or submetric urban solar mapping and it provides uh, the possibility to analyze the solar potential of roofs or shades parking, parking shades over a city with respect to the local electricity consumption, and it helps public and private decision makers and investors towards PV development. Of course, there are many uh, big and small uh, and medium enterprises involved in solar cadastre prov providers. And among them in France, we have Insun We Trust, uh, which is a small uh, enterprise. Um, uh, and Insan We Trust is providing free, accurate, and easy to use tool for general public to assess solar potential of rooftop PV systems. Here you can see one of them, uh, their uh, solar cadaster in Nantes. You have a solar mapping and you click, you can click on buildings. And then from one building, you can select the amount of PV you want to have. And you can get very easily the economical feasibility of your project, and then you, the business plan, business model of Insan We Trust is to connect with potential uh, PV installers uh, for the PV development. This uh, solar cadastres has been developed with the support of the French National Mapping Agency, IGN, MinParitech, with our Center of Research, Observation, Impact, and Energy, and Transvalor Innovation for the Solar Data, SODA database. So the more explicitly, the Earth observation, Earth observation data we are using to do this solar cadaster are satellite-based solar data from Eliokim-3 or CAMS radiation. It provides with three kilometers, 15 minutes, and ongoing or, or, um, almost uh, real time every 15 minutes since uh, 15 years of data about solar radiation. Um, we are also using some irradiance for clear sky integrating aerosol, air pollution, water vapor using Copernicus Atmospheric Monitoring Services. And of course, to calibrate the data that has been assessed from satellites, we are using in-situ measurements to uh, at least for one year for the calibration. We are also using some decametric digital terrain model, DTM, to describe orographic shadow effects. So it can be derived from SRTM or ASTER or um, uh, standard uh, uh, imaging uh, satellite spaceborne imaging system. And we are also using very high 10 centimeter digital surface model, DSM, to provide with 3D description of buildings, vegetation, and superstructures on the roof. Here we are using some data from aerial images 
correlation provided by IGN. And we are also using high accuracy map of buildings to provide with contour of corresponding roofs. For each point, you can derive the shadow effects uh, by comparing the shadow mask with the relief, sorry, with the orography from DTM and the building and vegetation from TSM to provide with uh, the mask and to compare with the sun pass during the year. So from that, we can derive some, you know, uh, in addition to provide uh, services to you, uh, individual customers, you can provide some key figures at uh, the city scales. And for example, in Nantes, we have identified more, more than 30 square kilometers of rooftop that can be installed in PV. And if, if we select 10% of the best rooftop with a PV efficiency of 15%, which is not very high, we can provide with more than uh, 600 gigawatt hour per year of electricity, which corresponds to 20% of the total annual electric consumption for Nantes. So now we have, uh, I have presented some static information from satellite and Earth observation, which are the yearly irradiation on tilted plants at one meter, one meter resolution, which is the solar cadaster. The idea is to provide with um, sing, uh, uh, more relevant information for the spatial, uh, for the solar radiation variability. And so thanks to the data provided by satellites, we can provide with, um, with near on the fly computation of intraday irradiation on tilted plants on the same area with the same type of methodology. So, uh, this is the, 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 uh, one of the objectives of the pilot in eShape about the high PV penetration in urban area. The objective of this pilot is to develop GIS tools, uh, geographical information system tools, dedicated to high photovoltaic penetration at urban scale, providing earth observation-based information about urban energy system modeling, electric energy demand profiles, and accurate electric production estimation or forecast of fleet of PV rooftop systems. The users that are expected for such pilots is, uh, sorry, are uh, urban planners, grid operators, aggregators for energy trading, and also researcher in energy and urban planning, and of course, citizen for the self-consumption. In this pilot, in eShape, we are, there are two parts, and I will talk only of, about the first part, about the PV variability at urban scale uh, with the pilot in Nantes. But there is a second part, about health observation data for PV integration in the urban energy system, and the pilot is in Oldenburg. The partners of this pilot is Minparitec, Armin, Transvalor, and DLR, which is the German aerospace. So I won't go into detail about the data used because I have already described for the solar data. It's basically the same. But what is important in eShape is the use of data and information access services, yes, and we have opt for the WKO Yes, to provide cloud processing uh, requested on the fly with um, web processing services. This is for the uh, back office and for the front office, hosting a Jupyter Hub with Jupyter Notebooks exemplifying in Python different use cases that I will describe with GIS-like interface, uh, uh, web processing services, asynchronous requests, and output data exploitation and representation. The first use case we have in mind is based on historical analysis of PV variability at urban scale, and the usage are PV self-consumption estimation, and it will be used for sizing individual systems in urban or in city, and the targeted user is uh, in sun retrust. Instead of in sun retrust providing with only the amount of energy that, that can be provided by a given roof uh, for one year, we will provide, uh, thanks to additional information about uh, intra-hour uh, electric consumption from the customers, we can provide day by day the amount of energy that can be, that are consumed, cons the amount of energy in blue that will be provided by the PV system. And therefore you can, uh, minute per minute, uh, provide with information about the surplus of, uh, the, of electricity that will be injected in the grid, and the imports that will be requested for the consumption. 
And that way we can um, um, assess the self-consumption and the self-sufficiency ratios that is very important for uh, self-consumption sizing of a PV system. The second use case that we have in mind is also about historical analysis of PV variability, but not at the individual rooftop system, but uh, for simulation of PV injected in different source points of the electric grid at urban scale for different scenarios of PV penetrations. The users that can be of uh, uh, interesting by such a pilot, that such use case are uh, urban DSO, just like Enedis in France. For example, here we have a urban area as an example of 1.5 per 1.5 kilometers, with uh, in red the 20% of PV penetration corresponding to this in this area more than 20 megawatt peak of PV systems and 35 uh, source points in the grid. And uh, here, in a static way, you can provide with the nameplate power, PV power injected in source points. But thanks to this information that can be derived from satellites uh, at uh, intraday, we can provide with uh, information about the temporal evolution of instantaneous PV power uh, potentially injected in each source point for the grid and give information for NEDIS about the solar variability induces by PV penetration in urban cities. Finally, we have in mind a third uh, use case based on the ability of uh, satellite data to provide with uh, no casting uh, about solar radiation. And so we can provide with PV no casting and shorter forecasting. The usage are, for example, energy trading with portfolio of PV rooftop systems. For example, we have in mind, but not yet uh, exactly uh, identified, urban solar energy in France, which are an uh, electric provider from a uh, PV system in urban areas. So the, the, the idea is to use clone motion vectors, which are the techniques, from two consecutive satellite images to provide with uh, aerosol and water vapor forecasting and 3D shadowing effect from digital surface model to provide with uh, forecasts. And here you have an example here of uh, such a forecast it's an ensemble forecast for which you can derive the, the median value of the forecast and the worst, worst case scenario of the forecast and then help the, for example, urban solar energy to provide with energy trading, uh, accurate energy trading uh, from the portfolio of their PV rooftop systems. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Philip, uh, for a very interesting presentation, which shows that there is not only an enormous potential for transformation to clean energy in cities, but also enormous potential for more flexibility uh, yeah. in the energy uh, system and, and also achieving a lot more uh, efficiency in in how we uh, use and, and trade uh, energy. So I, yeah. I think this is a very interesting uh, very interesting topic. Um, there are no questions yet from the uh, um, from the audience. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe one short one from my side before we yeah. continue with the next speaker because we uh, have to make up a bit for for the time. Um, are there? Um, what do you see as the most important barrier uh, in terms of um, urban planners, uh, but also maybe energy network operators, uh, not uh, picking up this type of things uh, sufficiently fast? So is it a cultural thing? Is it that people are used to rely more on paper maps? Or is it um, that the, they are a bit afraid that, as they consider it maybe not yet proven enough? Yeah, so the, indeed the PV on the urban area is not very uh, up to date because industries prefer now to develop um, uh, PV on the ground uh -huh. uh, because of the cost of the electricity. But at a point there is many uh, 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 good points to develop uh, PV, as I said, in urban areas. And uh, for, for that, I think we need this type of solar cadaster to push people toward this direction. This is the, and the main problem is the availability of uh, 3D information. Mm -hmm. And uh, satellite uh, information is, uh, of course, of interest. But for the moment, 
the resolution of satellite uh, system is not at the level of the 10 centimeter we need to do this uh, solar cadaster at this uh, at this resolution. So there is yeah. a need of improving uh, satellite data uh, to provide with uh, digital surface model um, uh, in a large scale. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So yeah. I think that uh, that makes clear what uh, where we still have work to do uh, as a community. Thank you. Um, now I would like to invite the second speakers uh, that are Pana Kiotis Cosmo Cosmopoulos uh, and Professor Hesham uh, Al Askari, uh, who will uh, show us a couple of examples from uh, Greece and from uh, Egypt uh, around a web surface to control and manage uh, energy demand and supply and integration uh, into the power grids of uh, the cities Athens and uh, Aswan in Egypt. Uh, please go ahead, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, very well, and we can hear you loud and clear. Perfect. So, hello, my name is Panagiotis Kosmopoulos. I am a postdoctoral researcher at the National Observatory of Athens in Greece, and together with Professor Chesale Mascari from Chapman University in the United States, uh, we will present to you a web service in order to control and manage uh, the energy supply and demand and integrate uh, uh, the produced energy from solar systems into cities' electricity grids, focusing into two apl application examples, uh, one in the city of Athens in Greece and the second one in the city of Aswan in Egypt. Uh, at the National Observatory of Athens, we mainly exploit the modern Earth observation data and technology uh, by developing solutions that are able uh, to support the work of a variety of sectors, dealing in Teralia uh, with early warning systems uh, for natural disasters, renewable energy, human health, and thermal planning. Uh, in this presentation, we focus on the solar energy sector, where uh, the need for such a web service is directly related uh, with the need for optimal energy planning as a result of the now a base increase of the renewable energy sources participation share in the total energy production and consumption mix, uh, which until now is 22%, and uh, the target for the next decade is to reach almost 30% globally, in conjunction uh, with the overall influence of the climatic conditions from the irrational use of the produced energy. Uh, indicatively, over the past five years, uh, an estimated 15 gigatons equivalent of CO2 emissions uh, was avoided with the use of renewables, a number that is expected to increase to almost 70 gigatons for the next 30 years. Uh, so this specific need uh, for optimal energy planning requires an efficient energy management, uh, which has to operate as an integral part of the overall state administration. Uh, as a result, uh, the ability to monitor, forecast and manage uh, the surface solar energy uh, with the use of space technologies is useful mainly uh, in decision making uh, for the energy producers that uh, exploit photovoltaic uh, or concentrated solar power plants, as well as for the electricity transmission and distribution system operators. Uh, this information is able also to support the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals, which deal with uh, affordable and clean energy and uh, sustainable cities and communities, uh, providing economic and social added value through large Earth observation initiatives uh, like the Eurogeo ESA project, uh, which has as a main scope the co-design uh, of solutions and services together with the end users for the end users. Uh, to this direction, uh, at NOAA, uh, in collaboration uh, with the World Radius Center in Switzerland, uh, we developed through the ESA project a holistic uh, solar energy management system, system the so-called NextSense, uh, which is able to control in real time the solar energy production and balance uh, the distributed energy supply and demand uh, in collaboration with local and regional electricity hunting entities. Uh, this system is based on fast radiated transfer models, cloud motion vector for accurate forecasts uh, up to three hours ahead, uh, numerical weather prediction models for one, one day ahead forecasts uh, followed uh, by the subsequent uncertainties, and high-performance computing uh, for massive outputs uh, of the order of uh, 20 million simulations in less uh, than one minute, and an overall daily uh, data flow of almost 550 gigabytes. Uh, it uses as input satellite data from the Metosat second generation in order to monitor and quantify the cloud's effect on solar energy production, 
uh, while for the aerosol impact to exploit the Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service. And these outputs we produce operationally and in real time the surface total solar irradiance uh, covering uh, Europe and North Africa in high spatial, temporal and spectral resolution uh, of the order of uh, three kilometers, five minutes and uh, one nanometer respectively. And we, we estimate uh, the solar system's uh, energy production, which applies to all scale solar plants from big solar farms to small and medium rooftop photovoltaic installations uh, at urban environments. Uh, here is an example screenshot uh, from the NextSense uh, web service. It's totally open access. And I want to highlight that uh, for each one of the 1.5 million pixels of Europe and North Africa, uh, the user can retrieve in real time solar energy formation for three hours ahead uh, and three hours back uh, at 15 minute intervals. Uh, for direct access to this web service and for more technical details, you can follow uh, this link. Now, uh, in order to highlight the usefulness of such a service, uh, here is an application example from the city of Athens where we developed a dedicated solution operating at higher resolution. Each pixel is uh, 100 by 100 meters, covering the size of almost a building block for better annual planning purposes. So with support from the Era Planet SMERPS project, uh, we are trying to quantify the effect uh, of additional parameters to solar energy production, like uh, the photovoltaic panel's efficiency in the urban environment, the shadow effects, uh, the built-in energy adequacy, and the electricity balance uh, for uh, smooth smart grid uh, operations. Uh, in Greece, uh, the electricity transmission control is performed by IPTO, the independent power transmission operator, uh, the energy distribution by HEDNO, the Hellenic Electricity Distribution Network Operator, uh, while the PPCR is the public uh, power corporation on renewables and handles uh, a big portfolio of solar plants, including uh, a large number of rooftop installations in the city of Athens. The use of next sense uh, by these authorities is based uh, on the new European energy target model, which has as a main scope the energy market liberalization and the creation of a single competitive electricity market. Uh, the main characteristic of this model has to do with uh, the continuous intraday energy trading. So the operational exploitation of the space technology and the next end service is able to provide uh, accurate uh, solar energy short-term forecasts, crucial in the energy market, where on-the-spot energy prices uh, are defined by supply and demand equilibrium. As a result, if the energy suppliers can have uh, such accurate estimations for the distributed uh, solar energy production from uh, the solar systems, this information provides them with a comprehensive uh, advantage with clear economic benefits for their intraday and day-to-day -day market operations. And this is the reason why NextSense was co-designed directly with these decision makers. Uh, an example uh, of the potential benefits in Athens can be summarized in these two numbers. Uh, 30.5 billion euros will be the total discounted cost for the next decade by the extensive exploitation and use of rooftop installations and almost 226 megatons of CO2 equivalent of emissions will be avoided, indicating uh, the overall impact of the renewables penetration in smart cities environment and scale like here uh, in the example of Athens. Uh, as a brief conclusion, uh, I can say that uh, this web service is able to provide access to accurate solar energy formation, uh, mainly for urban planning, uh, energy management and grid stability, uh, while it can actively support uh, the energy producers at any solar system scale, as well as the transmission and distribution system operators with open access solutions like the NextSense for decision making, promoting uh, and supporting the sustainable development of cities, where almost the half of the global population is living, as well as affordable and modern energy for all citizens. And now, Professor Ascari uh, will present to you the example of Aswan in Egypt from the end user point of view as a direct liaison to the new and renewable energy authority. Uh, thank you so much, Panayotis, for, uh, for the great uh, presentation, and thanks uh, for having me and for the kind invitation to be part of this uh, workshop. Uh, coming after Philip and uh, Panayotis, it's uh, going to be very interesting to show another uh, success story uh, that we have been carrying uh, over in Egypt. Um, um, for the sake of time, Panayotis is going to keep sharing his screen, and I'm just going to follow on the slides. Next, please. Um, uh, as you can see, 
Uh, as you can see from this chart, the Egyptian government has been taking good steps towards moving away from its previous full reliance on fossil fuels. It came into realization that the country does not really need to use carbon intensive energy resources to achieve its development objectives. Uh, it has been witnessed that the country is making excellent progress towards its objective of increasing the share of renewable energy to more than 20% of its energy mix and looking with great attention to diversifying their pool of electricity production where renewables will be highlighted even more uh, by 2030 and beyond. As, as you can see from that pie chart, uh, renewables are going to have uh, some kind of increase uh, over, over, over time. Next, please. Next. Um, yeah, along these lines and with our clear messaging, we had the pleasure to work very closely with the Ministry of Electricity and Renewable Energy through the framework of, uh, of the GU Cradle uh, Initiative 2015-2018, where I, I had the pleasure of serving as a regional coordinator for that project. Through that effort, we were, we were able to develop the nation's first official solar atlas for Egypt, in which we specified a very big number of potential positions for new solar projects. We provided them with high resolution satellite imagery, as well as uh, calculations for the CSP and the, and the, and the DHI, GNI, for, for those numbers in terms of CSP projects as well as uh, photovoltaics. One of these locations was in Bimban, where last year one of the biggest solar projects worldwide started. In that regard, we were able to present our project to the Ministry of Electricity and Ministry of Military Production, working hand in hand in like you know some of the new initiatives that they have in order to uh, uh, for, for for better production of PV uh, installations, uh, as well as we worked with one of the uh, very uh, well established uh, health foundations, which is the Sir Yaqub Foundation in in Aswan, building a new hospital which is going to be based totally on uh, on solar or uh, clean energy. We were able also to apply this technology uh, at Aswan in order for to serve, like you know, the 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 the, the health and to serve uh, the people uh, people like you know, living in this in this kind of areas. Our work also was presented and highlighted in many media outlets as well as in major scientific venues, among which was the Royal Society, as you can see on the top image on the left hand side, uh, Royal Society in the UK, through a venue that was discussing the future of renewable energy uh, in Africa. We presented our solar atlas for the government at a, a very big uh, celebration that was uh, part. Um, uh, along the 75 years anniversary for Alexandria University. Next, please. Now, now in the framework, next slide, yes, yes, this one. Now in the framework of the EuroGeo Euro uh, E-Shape project, our novel solar energy management system, Next Sense, is being introduced uh, to Nerea in order to show how Next Sense can provide short-term forecasting of solar energy that can support the efficient integration of the PV produced energy into the electricity grid, as well as the energy distribution in urban scale, uh, like you know, through smart grids, uh, uh, etc. These partnerships, uh, in, in our opinion, is of great interest to Nerea and will be vital for them to have real-time control on the solar energy production, as well as to balance the distributed energy supply and demand in collaboration with local and regional electricity handling entities. For, uh, for checking the confirmation, confirming the reliability of our results, like, you know, we would like to compare what we are observing, what we are producing through the next sense, and we want to have some kind of ground observations, ground measurements in order to maintain, in order to make sure about the accuracy of our outputs. We are working very closely right now with the NRE administration to, in the process of obtaining real solar production data from the band solar farm to test against our data in order to highlight the usefulness of such a service to one of the biggest solar energy investments worldwide. You saw from Panayotis previous presentation where he showed the, the, the amount of, of the investment or the, the, the like billions of dollars which are going to be uh, saved in terms of using uh, renewables as well as the amount of the carbon dioxide the gigaton which is going to be also uh, reduced as, as that consequence we are looking into something similar which is going to be uh, hopefully happening during the lifetime of, uh, of uh, E-Shape. Next please. In the case of Aswan, as you can see presented here, we are introducing next sense to Nerea for the possible incorporation of the local PV systems energy into the grid and through the local energy distribution operations in order to provide clean energy for all in at urban scale. 
where it can help the penetration of the rooftop PV installations in that urban environment. And it can help also in exploiting the energy capacity of the Bimban solar farm that can prove to be effective for the whole energy consumption for urban area of Aswan and its uh, surrounding. It's, it's a large area, it's a big community, and we, 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 we believe that it can be quite useful and quite, uh, 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 quite beneficial uh, for these communities. This is in progress conversation and will prove to be feasible, effective, and implementable, hopefully by Nerea, uh, over the short uh, period of time, um, like, you know, very near future. Next, please. As we mentioned before, we had some success stories already working with the Minister of Electricity and, and Renewables, as well as working with, the, with NERIA. So our work with them resulted already in a full study that presented the estimation and forecasting techniques for the impact of particular matter on solar energy in Egypt by exploiting the synergy of Earth observation-based aerosol observations and forecasts from MODIS and CAMS with the state-of-the-art solar irradiation simulation uh, coming from SENSE. The idea for such a service in Egypt is to take into account the dusty effect on solar energy production, and the figure in front of you here presents for you the financial analysis results for the three specific locations, but here we are only showing the Aswan case study. We applied this on different locations in Egypt, but we are highlighting only one region here for a hypothetical scenario of 10 megawatt uh, system. The economic and the energy impact was quantified in terms of monthly means, total financial loss, and solar energy potential using the CAMS forecast and, uh, and sense. Uh, next slide, please. We, we have been observing a change and develop new massive new developments happening in Egypt right now in terms of new cities, urban development, expansion horizontally, as well as looking into like, you know, green initiatives, new cities and all of that. So with the current development that we are observing right, right now in Egypt and with the new cities being developed, our goal here is to promote our new web service that will be able to provide access to accurate solar energy information for smart energy, planning, for management, and for grid stability. While all this can actively support the energy producers at any solar system scale, as well as the electricity handling entities with open access solutions for decision making, promoting and supporting affordable and modern energy for all citizens in different urban communities in Egypt. It's, it's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take from Judith's question that was posed to Philip. It's a culture change. Like, you know, you need to work on all these kind of, of issues, all this kind of, of making sure that the technology is stable, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's feasible, it's uh, approachable. But at the same time, we have a, a huge task uh, ahead of us, which is like, you know, the culture change, the culture shift in order to believe and in order to buy into these kind of technologies, which will happen either sooner or later. And we are trying, uh, like, you know, to use this uh, amazing web technology right now in order to uh, to enhance it and as well as in order to introduce it for those urban uh, communities. Let me stop here for the sake of time and we will be happy to take any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Pam Afiotis and uh, Dr. Elaskari. Um, I uh, see that we are running a bit late, nevertheless, um, I would like to ask you one question uh, about this work. Uh, a great example from Athens and from uh, Aswan. Um, do you also see that this raises immediately questions about central or decentralized energy designs, or uh, is that um, is this technology mainly focusing on central uh, production of energy and, and distribution? Uh, in the current form, uh, it is uh, based. Uh, it is uh, addresses the issue from the handling entities in order to perform uh, a holistic uh, energy management uh, operation at urban scale. So until now, this service. Uh, that's why this service is co-designed directly with the Greek uh, transmission and distribution system operators in order to handle uh, as an overall uh, administration. Uh, for the energy uh, planning at EBA scale and, of course, uh, management. The next le level is uh, to be uh, exploited uh, by all uh, citizens 
But uh, this has also to do with the liberalization of the market in order for any people uh, that they want to install a photovoltaic at, at their rooftop to perform their own uh, intraday market operations in order to store the energy at batteries and sell at higher prices and all that stuff uh, uh, where the energy market uh, works. That's the idea until now. And we cannot hear you, Judith. Judith, you're muted. Uh, is that the same situation in Asman that you are uh, designing this together with the, the energy network operators? Uh, to to so you are now focusing still on a let's say more centralized approach. Is it th that proved to be successful and uh, at mm -hmm. some point like you know you are going to be working with the energy producers and like the people who are managing those systems but you need to approach them through the government through Nerea, which is mm -hmm. like you know, the official body dealing with the mm -hmm. renewables in egypt so so once we have this uh, under our belt and we already established an amazing working relationship with them uh, uh, like you know the decentralization is going to happen organically uh, so, yeah. so I'm not too worried about that. We are just in the step of uh, of getting them, like you know, to be on board and help us with the mm -hmm. project line. And this has been happening already. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I think this is uh, really mm -hmm. uh, insightful. And anyway, thank you so much for uh, this condensed and very insightful and yet informative uh, presentation. Uh, for the sake of time, I think we have to continue. I would like to invite uh, everybody in the audience, uh, if you have questions, please contact our speakers directly or put your questions in uh, the, the question box. Uh, for the sake of time, uh, we now uh, start with a couple of polls that have been presented uh, and prepared by uh, Grazia. Um, so the first question is, uh, and everybody is warmly invited to uh, to uh, uh, contribute again. Uh, do you think that the service presented is uh, for the, the first question, uh, for the first presentation, I think that refers to, uh, am I correct, uh, Grazia, uh, useful, easy to use, reliable, cost efficient or innovative? Okay, we see that a large part of our audience is convinced that this is very useful. So this um, this uh, proves that we are on the right uh, track. Yet easy to use, did not have so many votes. Very interesting uh, picture. The next one, Grazia. Would you like your city to invest in this kind of solutions to promote solar energy? So this is really a question, I think, for uh, citizen representatives and, and city representatives uh, on board here. Oh. Ah, I see there's a lot of potential for collaboration. We have 89% things that is worthwhile to invest in this type of solutions to promote solar energy. Thank you. The third poll then is related to the second presentation. Do you think that the service presented, so the web-based service, is useful, easy to use, reliable, cost efficient and innovative? Again, the same answers as the first time. Okay, here we have a more distributed picture. Uh, so the usefulness, uh, most people recognize it, but also a lot of people think it's very innovative. Uh, reliability and cost efficiency uh, are not yet uh, that uh, convincing, it seems. Uh, if probably they are, but um, the, the main uh, conclusion is that it's um, perceived as very useful and innovative. I think we have one more poll to go. For the second presentation, would you like your city to invest in this type of solutions to promote solar energy? Yes, don't know, 15% still considering. 8% thinks no. Very interesting to hear from the 8% who said no uh, during our panel discussion why you think it uh, it could be better. So uh, 
very curious to hear your answers. With this, uh, we have come to the end of this session. I think we are allowed a small break. Um, I think we can take five minutes for that, and then we will be back at 15.45, uh, a quarter to four. I would like to thank all the speakers again. A big uh, applause for your valuable contributions. I think it was very insightful and inspiring and gave a lot of ideas uh, for possibilities in future.